So now in this video, we're going to be using a 10 milli Henry inductor. And it's a good idea when you buy independent individual inductors like this that they're actually the uh, rated value that they state. So this is an LCR meter. It automatically measures inductance, capacitance, and resistance. And you can see here that we have MH for milli Henry and it's almost uh, 10 milli Henry. And so I ordered them individually. Sometimes sellers they use MH for micro Henry, which you're not supposed to do. So this uh, this inductor is in the micro Henry range, so 470 micro Henry, and so the symbol should be the Greek letter mu, which looks a lot like U if it's micro Henry. And one of the things is that uh, the 10 milli Henry is a lot larger so that's common and I find them in this rubber coating a little bit more the uh, larger they are so you can't go by size alone but size is often a good indicator if it looks very very small but they have MH a good chance it's actually micro Henry instead of milli Henry so just be aware of that so now we need to provide current to the inductor and cut it off so we have the switch we're going to provide, set the current with a few resistors. So we have a 150 ohm resistor positive rail to switch. We're going to add another one in parallel. These are 150 ohm resistors. And then a third one in parallel. So that will provide three times the current of a single 150 ohm resistor. We're going to use a 6 volt power supply. And uh, so it will provide the same current but they won't get any hotter because they're uh, all passing about a quarter of a watt each so we can increase the current without increasing the wattage of any particular component to get that extra current and so now we're going to add the inductor you can see this jumper there on that side of the switch and we're going to go to the ground rail so when I close the switch current will go through the resistors and the inductor so there's a problem when you release the switch they'll cut current from the inductor the inductor wants to continue passing current so we're gonna take an LED I have here one with its legs already split so longer this is the longer lead right there the anode shorter one the cathode there we're gonna put the anode to the negative rail and then the cathode up to where that jumper is same spot same two spots where the inductor is plugged in so it's reverse bias now when we press the switch it will help to have the uh, LED the, uh, light off down low. When we press the switch, nothing happens. The LED is reverse bias. It's not going to light up. Current is passing through the inductor though. And when I release the switch, now you can see a flash through the LED. That's because the inductor does not want to stop passing current uh, suddenly. It wants current to keep flowing. It goes down over time, but... Uh, it wants it to keep flowing so briefly it flows through the inductor or through the uh, LED and through the inductor until the inductor runs out of energy there's a collapsing magnetic field we press the switch a magnetic field builds up and you can measure that magnetic field other ways but uh, in this case we release the switch the magnetic field collapses and current it keeps current flowing briefly and uh, so Inductors do not like rapid changes in current. That's why you usually see a diode uh, or a, a diode, usually a rectifier diode, but there's a diode across them and the diode is reverse bias from the circuit because currents flow in this way. It wants to keep flowing that way when we turn the switch off. So this side's more positive, that side more negative when the uh, power is cut and the inductor is continuing to uh, push current. So now I set my bench power supply to about 6 volts and we will see uh, at the rail there there we go 6 volts spot on and this will work about equally well with 5 volts or whatnot. the zag voltage does not matter you just don't want to exceed the voltage rating of or the wattage rating of the resistor so there we go 5 volts and you can see the LED flash when I release the switch so 
Does that voltage? Does not matter. Just do not exceed the wattage rating of the resistors. These are 150 ohm resistors, quarter watt resistors, and six volts across them is the quarter watt point. That's the maximum uh, wattage that you want across them. So if you use a higher voltage, you'll need to use higher resistors. But again, you can put them in parallel as needed. And I don't know the current, uh, the maximum current to put through these inductors. So I haven't burned one out yet, I don't think. At least not uh, with something simple like this. And uh, so I think they can handle a decent amount of current. But that's something to try to find when you look these up, how much current they can handle. So, in any case, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.